The spies sent by Moses to explore the land came back with a wholly misleading report. They said we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. The land through which we have gone as spies is an Eretz Ochelet Yoshveha, a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. In fact, as we later discover in the book of Joshua, the inhabitants of the land were terrified of the Israelites. It was exactly the reverse. When Joshua sent spies to Jericho, Rahab told them, A great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. When the people of the land heard what God had done for the Israelites, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. The spies should have known this. They themselves had sung at the Red Sea. The people of Canaan melted away. Terror and dread fell upon them. The spies were guilty of an attribution error, assuming that others felt as they did. They said, we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and so we were in their eyes. But as the Kotzka Rebbe noted, they were entitled to make the first claim about what we felt, but not the second about what the others felt. They had no idea how the other people felt about them. They were terrified of the Canaanites, and they completely failed to see that the Canaanites were terrified of them. But the real obvious questions about the spies are these. Number one, how come ten of the twelve made this mistake? And number two, how come two of them, Yoshua and Kalev, didn't? Stanford University psychologist Carol Dweck has written a fascinating book called Mindset on why some people fulfill their poten potential and others don't. Her interest was aroused when she was watching 10-year-old children trying to solve puzzles the people that their teachers had given them to solve. Some of them, when the puzzles became very difficult, thrived. They relished the challenge even when the puzzles were just too hard for them. But others became very anxious. As the puzzles became hard for them to solve, they became easily discouraged and just stopped trying to do them. She wanted to understand why. What makes the difference between people who enjoy being tested and those who don't enjoy being tested? What makes some people grow through adversity while others become demoralized? Her research led her to the conclusion that it's a matter of mindset. Some of us see our abilities as given and unalterable. We're just gifted or ordinary and there's not very much we can do about it. She calls this the fixed mindset. Others believe that we grow through our efforts. When we fail, we don't define this as failure, but as a learning experience. She calls this the growth mindset. To those with a fixed mindset, you try and avoid difficult challenges because you think it'll expose you as inadequate. If you try something and you fail, it shows, I'm just not bright, I'm just not able. So people have, who have a fixed mindset are very reluctant to take risks. They play it safe. But people with a growth mindset react differently. They don't just seek challenge, they thrive on it. The bigger the challenge, the more they stretch. When do people with a fixed mindset thrive? When things are safely within their grasp. If things get too challenging, they lose interest. Dweck says that parents can do great damage to children when they tell their children, you're gifted, you're clever, you're talented. This encourages the child to believe that he or she has a fixed quantum of ability. And that discourages them from risking failures. Such children tend to say things like, I often feel that my parents won't value me if I'm not as successful as they'd like. Now, parents who want to help their children should, says Dweck, praise them not for their ability, but for their effort. 
their willingness to try hard even if they fail. A great basketball coach used to say to his players, you may be outscored, but you'll never lose. If you give of your best, you might lose the game, but you'll gain and you'll grow, and you will be winners in the long run. The fixed mindset lives with the constant fear of failure. The growth mindset doesn't think in terms of failing at all. It just thinks about learning. Apply this logic to the spies, and immediately you see something fascinating. The Torah describes the spies in these words. They were men of standing. They were heads of the Israelites. They were princes. What does that mean? These were people with reputations to guard. Others had high expectations of them. There were princes, leaders, men of renown. If Dweck is right, people laden with expectations that others have of them tend to be risk-averse. They don't want to be seen to fail. And that might be why the spies came back and said, in effect, we can't win against the Canaanites, therefore we shouldn't even try. That's what happens if you have a fixed mindset. There were two exceptions, Kalev and Yehoshua. Why were they exceptions? Well, Kalev came from the tribe of Yehuda, of Judah. And Judah, as we see in the book of Bereshit, was the first Baal Tshuva. Early in his life, it had been Judah who proposed selling Joseph into slavery. But then he matured. He was taught a lesson by his daughter-in-law, Tamar. He confessed about her, Tzadkamimani. She was right, I was wrong. And that episode seems to have changed Judah because later, when the viceroy of Egypt, his brother Joseph, whom he didn't recognize, threatened to keep Binyamin, his youngest brother, as a slave, Judah was willing to sell himself into slavery so that his brother could go free. Judah is the clearest example in Bracious of somebody with a growth mindset, somebody who takes adversity as a learning experience rather than as a failure. And evidently, he handed on this growth mindset to his descendants, one of whom was Caleb Kalev. What about Joshua? Well, the text tells us something very interesting about Joshua, specifically in the story of the spies. It tells us that Moses changed his name. Originally, he'd been called Hoshea, now he was called Joshua. He added a letter to his name. Now, in the Torah, a change of name always implies some change of character or of calling. Avram became Avraham. Jacob became Israel. When our name changes, says Maimonides, it's as if we or somebody else were saying, you are not the same person now as you were before. Anyone who has experienced a name change, has been inducted into a growth mindset. They know that they're not fixed for all time. They have experienced change. People with a growth mindset don't fear failure. They relish challenges. They know that even if they fail, they'll try again until they succeed. It cannot be coincidence that the two among the spies who had the growth mindset were also the two who were unafraid of the risks, the challenges, the trials of conquering the land, even if the people were bigger than they were. Nor can it be accidental that the ten spies who carried the burden of people's expectations, you're a leader, you're a prince, you're a man of high rank, they were reluctant to take that risk. If this analysis is correct, then the story of the spies holds significant lessons for us here now. God doesn't ask us never to fail. All he asks is that we give of our best. He lifts us when we fall. He forgives us when we fail. It is this that gives us the courage to take risks, and that is what Yeshua and Kalev know, knew, one through his name change, the other through his ancestor Judah's experience. God wants us to have a growth mindset and never to be afraid of challenge. And that is the paradoxical but deeply liberating truth. Fear of failure causes us to fail. It is the willingness to fail that allows us to succeed. Shabbat Shalom.